Alrighty guys, so thanks for tuning in to another video. So today I'm just going to be talking quickly about AFR tables, FL ratio tables, and how I usually go about just setting up a simple AFR table. So sit back, enjoy. Okay, so I have the Tuna Studio software open and I have a AFR table, stands for FL ratio table. I'm just going to explain to you simply. All right, so on the y-axis, this one up here, we have load. And in this map, the load is in KPA, which is kilopascals, which is a unit of measurement for manifold pressure. On this one here, I have the x-axis, and on that x-axis, we have RPM. So basically, it's a 16 by 16 table, and then the ECU would just be referencing this table when it wants to correct your when it wants to correct for autotune, if you have autotune enabled with the paid version of Tuna Studio, or if you're using your closed loop fueling. So you would see across the board, I have 14.7 to 1. In this map, we're just going to assume that you, for instance, using something like may, maybe a 1.6 Miata stock engine and a engine with stock injectors, stock cams, and stock everything. So we're going to be also be assuming that you're doing a map for pump gas. So a lot of folks get confused as to what numbers they need to put in, put here into this map, but the engine can run just fine with very, very little variance in the AFR. I would dare say that you can probably put something like 13O across this entire map and the car would just run fine. But in some sections of the map where you'd probably need less fuel, then the car would probably just be running richer than you need it to be and it'll just be quote unquote wasting fuel so we're just going to break down this map into sections so typically these cars would idle about here this section of the map but most specifically between about 26 to about 40 kpa based on your elevation and whatnot these cars by default are wired in batch from factory and the plug and play speed unit for them and most ECUs would probably still be in batch. What I've found from my tuning over the years is that these cars typically don't want to idle anywhere close to 14.7. So 14.7 is stoich, 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 whatever you want to pronounce it, for pump gas. We're not going to go into the science of that. But for emissions reasons, folks generally tend to want to idle and run the car around 14.7 but this is not idle for every single section of the map so for around here what i would typically be aiming for is here i would richen it up a bit so smaller numbers means richer larger numbers means leaner so i'd richen it richen it up again it can run just fine at 14.7 but most times it doesn't so i richen that up to about 14.0 cruising section of the map would typically be about here about 1500 rpm to about 4000 rpm give or take and that is just above idle in this section it's perfectly fine to leave it at 14.7 you can lean it out a bit more to about 15 or 15 2. i usually don't go past 15 2 or those of you tuning in lambda i usually don't go past lambda 1.02 and above that we start going into wide open throttle and for the most part newbies you can just use 13o at wide open throttle depending on your elevation wide open throttle would be anywhere from about 88 to about 98 or 100 kpa based on your elevation the higher you are the lower your the kpa will be at wide open throttle since you above sea level if you're starting off most cars you can do 13o when you get to tweaking you can increase this to 13.2 some cars will pick up some power with that some won't so you can go richer 12.8 give or take and this is essentially all you need to do for the air fuel ratio table so i just need to let you guys know that it doesn't really matter that much when you're actually playing with the afr table the car will run just fine again this car can probably run just fine at 13.0 across the entire map 14.0 across the entire map 
but as you go into wide open throttle you typically need a bit more fuel in there to cool down the the chambers the pistons and whatnot so hence the reason why i'm targeting about 13 or or you can do 12 5 12 8 completely up to you and again at idle you target something richer just because those cars wired in batch or semi-sequential typically do not like to idle about 14.7 some of them do some of them don't that will boil down to how you have your car wired sequential will obviously idle a lot better and the size of the injectors usually really large injectors typically don't like to idle that well at idle at a 14.7 again there are tips and little tricks you can do to get that going but this is essentially the quick and dirty of a afr table okay one last thing i forgot to mention was um the breakout for the axes so on the rpm axis i usually have about 500 which is just below idle rpm so i can use that for my little tricks to get idle working just fine and the car would essentially be idling in between these two and i usually break up the points after that into um 500 increment 500 rpm increments you can choose to break it up as you wish but i usually just match that to my ve and my spark table and again my y-axis load i usually have a steady increase of about five to six kpa so you go 20 26 30 36 etc for some reason this one does not allow me to do 35 and 25s but it's essentially just keep it uniform and add for that helps with resolution and for tuning but that's essentially it and this is essentially the a quick tutorial of how i go about adjusting or setting afr tables for a simple engine so hope you guys learn something um if you do smash that like button and catch you guys on the next one till then stay safe